Hello, I'm OBX Stoycat, and welcome back to the video. Today, we're to talk about and show you all of the Easter eggs found within the new minigame lobby for Minecraft on the console. You might recall that they introduced a brand new lobby, and this lobby is bigger not only in terms of just pure size, which you can see it definitely is, but it's also bigger in terms of the number of Easter eggs and secrets it does contain. Because the old one kind of just had the mob heads and a couple of secret areas, which was cool to find by itself, but this one has so many secret areas, has so many ways to get to those secret areas, like draining the fountain, for instance, but it also then has, uh, you know, six mob heads to collect, it has six, uh, sets of armor to collect and it has 12 music discs as well as just a bunch of other little weird things that link in together and that I wanted to show you all off in today's videos. Hopefully you all do enjoy it, like it if you do like it because it helps out the channel and let's know you do like these sorts of videos because this took a really long time to find all these little individual bits by themselves and honestly it's been really fun exploring the look for the past two days but hopefully you do all enjoy all of that effort condensed into one video but with that said let's get straight into it shall we and let's start the very first easter egg which is kind of important because it unlocks a lot of the other ones um, because basically you can drain the fountain inside Solar. So you can also get down below the lobby by just using Elytra and flying here, but there is a way to do it without having to win the game, which I think is kind of useful. So the way you do this is you find a lever just under the uh, you know stairs over here. There's a lot of secret things where they keep uh, you know a, a, a stairs upside down to like make it hard to find a lever. You want to uh, activate the lever just over there, which will activate some iron doors over here. So once you do that, you get this little secret room down here, which has three secrets held within it. Actually, there is a secret behind this painting here, which is a set of armor. We'll come back to that later. There is a secret in the chest here, which is a music disc and there's also a uh, you know a water bucket kind of hidden uh, in an item frame up there pointing to the bottom right so that's kind of important because there's also a water bucket out here and I used to assume again before I found that thing uh, that the water bucket should have to point down to drain the fountain but no you actually point the water bucket to the right uh, or the bottom right I should say which then unlocks the other set of doors on the other side because there's lots of iron doors in this map which as you can see that then unlocks this thing over here which then allows you to get to uh, you know this uh, room over here which will then allow you to drain the fountain by pressing that button which if I now go outside You'll notice at the start of the video, the fountain had water in, and just now, all of the water, or just now, I should say, all of the water is gone. So, if you do this in multiplayer, you can actually have someone sit at the fountain, ready to press the uh, lever, and you can make all of the water go down below. You don't really need to do that, but it's a cool thing you can do, and that I've seen happen. So, yeah, if you ever wanted to fill the uh, fountain from the old lobby, you can totally do that. But if you just want to go down there regardless in solo, here it is, the old lobby. It's pretty, it's looking, actually I was going to say it's looking pretty good, but it's looking pretty bad. It's fallen into disrepair because it's been replaced by the new one. And yeah, there's lots of cool stuff going on here. But for now, just keep in mind, uh, you know, the mob head thing is what we want to really focus on because I wanted to, uh, you know, first of all, talk about how you get all five of these mob heads and then how you get the sick mob head by doing all of those. So yeah, the way you do this is you need to get each of the other five mob heads and you put them in this chest. It activates the lights and it lets you know that you, you know, have done that. And once you've done all five, you can go to the next ste uh, step. So yeah, as I said, uh, we we're going to get out of the lobby now which you can do by going through this place right here where the creeper head was before and just climbing this ladder back up and opening a couple of iron doors and going out that way. There's another way to get out through the nether but it requires a second step so this one's a lot easier because it's literally just doors. So yeah let's talk about how you get all of the mob heads now that we've gone and drained the fountain. So the first mob head is gotten uh, by uh, simply grabbing a bow and arrow. We should do this right now anyway uh, because you want to grab yourself uh, you know, again like you want to grab at least a stack of arrows maybe two. We'll just grab one for now and you want to uh, first of all actually you want to go ahead and uh, take two of these arrows because we'll do the most complex one first because that there's three kind of easy ones there's one uh, really complex one and then there's one which is just kind of found when you go to the nether so yeah the first uh, you know the first and most complex one we'll go through is the creeper head one so this is usually a lot easier of two players if there's two of you doing this then you can do it in a you know lobby in the 60 seconds but if you're doing this solo you do need to have did i do that correctly just to make sure be 100 percent certain you've done this uh, pre uh you want to place one item on the pressure plate over there then you want to go to the other one and place an item on that pressure plate too because on both sides of the winning kind of chamber where the elytra and the diamond armor are found you're actually going to find yourself a pressure plate and you want to activate both those pressure plates at once and again i find the easiest way to do that is to use two separate arrows so we'll place one over there then we'll run all the way up this side and we can place one over here and uh, what that will do is that'll activate a firework which is cool by itself who doesn't love to be rewarded with fireworks and it will also uh, open like a chest which has a creeper head on the opposite side of the map so yeah this is the most complex one and it's the most time consuming even if you know what you're doing have you seen how much time it just took uh, but it is the one i wanted to go through first because again it's it, now we've got out of the way uh, every, 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 all the other ones are going to seem so much easier. So yeah, nine creeper heads. That's kind of nice. The second one is really, really easy. We just have to fire an arrow and hit the bottom below the dispenser. So let's do that right now. I think we missed just there. Um, <laughs> I think we're missing quite a few times because of the uh, arrow, uh, accru uh, sorry, the arrow randomness. But we just keep firing. Then eventually we'll hit it, and we should uh, see a skeleton head pop out again. If I can actually hit this thing which apparently I'm not doing right now. Um, but yeah, basically if you do this and then eventually you hit the button, 
Maybe I'm just, uh, maybe it's hit and then like there's, there's no skeleton skulls in there right now. Uh, but yeah, basically if, yeah, that's how you get the skeleton head. We'll come back for that one apparently. Uh, then next up we've got um, two other little um, games you kind of have to play. So this first one, if you want to work it out yourself, uh, there is four separate like um, uh, levers you can pull in that room over there. So if you're wondering why I haven't covered those, it's because those just uncover the combination for this. However, you don't actually need to know the combination. There's kind of like a loophole in this game because if you just press all of the buttons fast enough, it doesn't matter because you'll win the game regardless. So we just go left to right or right to left. Then all it will do, we press all four buttons and suddenly, oh, we have to go even faster it seems. So we press all four buttons really, really quickly. And then it's going to make the chest activate. That's because, again, you're meant to do these in sequence to make the chest open. However, if you do them fast enough, it's the same as doing them in sequence. So you don't really need to do that to get your zombie head. So the next one here is actually a uh, its a puzzle because around the map there are four swords hidden like there was before. If you find all four swords, you're going to get yourself a Steve head. So uh, again, this is something where if you want, you can go around and find those. Or if you want to just know it, because I'm sure that's what you're here for, you can do them in this order. So right, right up, up left up. Uh, they're kind of all close to each other, like you just slowly fade to the left a bit, and then you can find yourself the Steve head. So next up, I'm going to go back and I'm going to get this skeleton skull, because that's actually pretty necessary as it turns out. So let's just try a, f a few more times. Maybe let's go up there. Let's, <laughs> let's see what we're doing so horribly wrong. Maybe I'm firing at like, you know, the wrong button, or maybe there is no button. Maybe that's what it is. But no, let's just, uh, there is a, uh, a skull up there that, uh, as you can see, oh, it just landed over here. That's why I didn't get it. So yeah, sometimes it lands over here, apparently. That's the first time it's ever done it for me. But just keep in mind that there is a uh, dispenser up there that will activate some stuff. And let's do it again, just in, just so you can see that it does in fact work and I didn't like place that up. I don't know, I don't know what conspiracy theory you'd come up with, but there is in fact uh, skeletons ahead that will come out there if you do that. So uh, next, uh, let's take all four of these. Let's go down below the fountain again. Let's place these in their necessary places. So uh, the, the cool thing is they have like a sorting system. So when you place these in like slowly one by one, it activates the lights as it uh, you know, recognizes them. So you're gonna see how like, ooh, Zombie head. Oh uh, yeah, look, we've got a lot of heads, but we don't have the wither skeleton skill yet. So the way you get this is by going to the nether. The nether is activated from the overworld, like I've shown before, or there is a lever over here, which you can press. You can very easily uh, just go in, grab yourself the wither skull, which we're gonna do right now, actually. And once you do that, you've got the fifth skull. You could also wear one of these on your head if you really wanted to, and that's kind of nice. And actually, you know, since we're in the Never anyway, let's point out one more thing. This is going to be patched out soon, so if you want to abuse it while it exists, there is in fact a hole over here. I'm going to be really careful not to fall in. There's a hole over here that's two blocks deep that once you fall into, you can't get out. So again, 4J usually don't keep those in their maps because they're like, you know, it's not so fun to be trapped. But if you want to get trapped for a little bit until they patch the lobby, then that's a thing you can do over there. But yeah, let's uh, grab our Wither Skeleton Skull. Let's throw it in the chest and let's activate the fifth light because this is how you get the final and the coolest, in my opinion, mop head. Because once you activate all five of those and all five of the, uh, you know, the redstone lamps turn on, uh, basically you can go through these iron doors and get, like I just said, the dragon head. The coolest of all the heads. There's only one of these in there as far as I can tell. Like if you, you press it again and nothing happens. And uh, like I said, it's just the best of the mob heads because look at me, I'm a dragon ocelot. What's that even about? So yeah, with that said, let's move on to it. So that's the uh, mob head Easter egg. There's five of them to collect. And once you collect all five, you get the sixth one, which is the dragon head, the coolest of all the heads. And you can totally wear that if you want to. But in case, uh, I think if you're playing tumble, this is like the coolest head to have because like it makes you more visible, but it makes you look cooler. So next up, let's talk about the uh, the uh, you know the music disc Easter eggs because I'm sure you're curious about that next. And there is 12 music discs to be found across the map. One of them is down on this lobby. The other 11 are found on the other lobby. So let's grab the one from this lobby and go up and show you the, uh, all of the locations. So yeah, the first one is found in the location of the old... Um, you know, like the pressure plate behind the, well, not the pressure plate, but in this little room over here where the iron sword is still found, you know, the glass is broken because apparently explosions happened here. I'm not sure how this lobby fell into this repair, but there is in fact the 13 music disc found just over here. Also, by the way, you can still go through the hole in the wall, but now it's like, it's a little bit, you know, less exciting. There's just, uh, there's not too much going on. There's, but again, explosions presumably happened here. And yeah, we're going to take this 13 music disc and we're going to go up to the, uh, you know, the, the regular lobby. And we're going to take that with us and put it in the chest because there are basically, uh, again, there's 11 different ones to collect. Some of them are easy, some of them are harder. And uh, there's no reason to collect all of them. But if you do want to play a particular disc, here's how you collect all 12, uh, you know, discs. So the, uh, the the second one, I feel like it's, a lot of people think you need to use music discs, but because of the way the, uh, 
the redstone set up. All you need to do to get this music disc right here is put five separate items in there. So you can't put five arrows in there because that's not five separate uh, you know items, as you can see. We put all those arrows in there and it doesn't change anything. So what we have to do instead is put five separate you know, fishing rods is a good example in there. And what that does is it slowly fills this up until you get the next music disc, which just fell in the water there, uh, which as you can see is Melody. So that's two music discs all done and sorted. The third music disc is one we actually uh, spoke about earlier because it's in the uh, the secret room that you use to unlock the fountain. If we just run all the way up here, you'll notice there is a third music disc. So uh, it's uh, I think it's 13. Uh, by the way, in case you're curious, there is 12 music discs, not 13. This always trips me up. I always think because there's one called 13 that, oh yeah, that must be, you know, logically speaking, 13 must be the 13th disc. No, 13 is the 12th disc because, you know, they, they hate counting. That's what that is. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead place the third disc in there. Now let's go over the rest of them because a lot of them are kind of close together. For instance, if we go to um, if we go to the left side of the map, we're going to find three together. If we go to the right, we'll find three, or three kind of close together. So this first one yeah, over here is found below the stairs. It's Ward. It's a pretty good, good disc. Like, you know, it's the first one I'd really consider listening to out of the ones we have so far, uh, which by the way, you can place them in the jukebox and you can listen if that's your thing. Uh, the next up we've got just over here. Um, so you can climb onto the buildings from here and doing this uh, is something I did on the very first day and accidentally found two discs because one is just over here, kind of hidden in the wall. It's blocks. Again, a, pr a pretty good disc, uh, a respectable piece of Minecraft music to listen to, I guess. Uh, then if we head up to here, we're going to find the uh, second, you know, kind of roof disc. There's three found on the roofs, by the way. So there's the second one found just over here. This one's kind of tricky to get to because like you, if you just try and reach out for it, you'll die. But you want to crouch all the way to the edge of this block, then uncrouch and then go in there and get it. If you try and like jump, jump get it, you will run out of space. Cause, like, let, let me show you. If you go like that, then it stops you in the chest before you can do anything. So yeah, that is three more discs done and dusted. So um, there's also just on the way back, there's another disc found just over here. If you press this button, then it opens a block in the wall with a dispenser and then it closes the block and gives you a disc, which is Strad. So that's four more discs found for us and brings our total up to seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we got seven discs now. So let's like put them in like this because there'll be four rows of three. Uh, and that means there's five discs remaining. So where are these five discs found? Well, one of them is found in the underwater secret world thing. So just over here again, I, I've shown how to get this before, but it is important for this disc. So let's go there right now. So place the lever down. That opens this door over here and allows you to go underwater. So this is kind of a cool thing because like, oh look, I'm in an underwater world and isn't that wonderful? But realistically, there's only one reason to be here. And that one reason is the chest found in the corner over there. So let's go to the chest doo, 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 and let's grab ourselves the eighth music disc, which is of course, where are we now? Which is a good question to ask when you're underwater and you see this fake, you know, ocean monument, like where are we now? It's a very important question to be asking, but no, let's uh, take this disc with us and run to the other uh, four. So yeah, again, one of them um, is found in this same little building because a lot of the discs are kind of close together because there's 12 of them. They couldn't really separate them too much. So just, you know, by running up the stairs, we can find another disc, another pretty okay disc in my opinion, because in the chest you can see it is far. Then there is two more discs to be found. And these last two are the best ones in my opinion, because, oh, sorry, I think it's three more, but uh, because uh, one is found just over here. It's very, very sneaky because as you can see, it's hiding in the corner. This is Chirp, one of my favorites, by the way. Then if we jump down to here, on the opposite side of the map where we found, um, you know, the white discs just over there, there is one on the opposite side where you just press a pressure, pressure plate and a similar thing happens where, oh, chest opens up and you can get still. And then finally, I think, you know, most appropriately, because, uh, you know, I'm an ocelot in Minecraft apparently, uh, basically there is in fact the final music disc to be found just over at the side of the map over here. So if you go over here, you can find yourself everyone's favorite music disc because it is, it, it's cat by the way. I was, I was gonna be like a dramatic reveal, but obviously you can work out it's cat, everyone's favorite music disc and the one you're realistically gonna wanna play because again, it's, it's cool. It's got the console exclusive, like it plays dogs after it's done, but yeah, that's cat. And the other uh, you know, four music discs can go in here, bringing our total up to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 11 plus the 12 in there. That's 12 music discs, all of them found. Uh, we have completed the music disc hunt. We found all of the mob heads, but what is there left to find? What are the other Easter eggs? So next up, we actually have a secret way to get every single set of armor. So just bear in mind, I can't show you the diamond armor because you have to win a game to do that, which you can find up there. And I can't show you the Elytra either, which is arguably armor, but there are five other sets of armor you can get without winning a game. And uh, two of them, are, one of them's really easy. One of them's kind of easy. And the other three require a little bit of maneuvering. So yeah, the easiest one is the leather armor because it's the worst armor. Who wants to wear leather armor? 
I don't want to wear leather armor. But if you do, you can go to the dispenser found just over here and you can do so. Again, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to be a leather person, that's a thing you can do. The second set, uh, this is one of the harder sets actually. Uh, it's, it's the same leather armor, but it looks a bit cooler and it comes with a really cool piece of headgear because it's found just uh, behind the painting here. And if you do that, you're going to see how you get a... You should get a pumpkin, I guess, because I had my head slot free. You get a pumpkin, and you get a bunch of white armor. So I think the white armor is just a better version of this. So let's put that on now. I think it's just a better looking version. You can be the white pumpkin, I think it was, from Minecraft Story Mode. Uh, or you can just be a spooky white person. Or you can just wear the pumpkin on your head and decide that's your thing. I don't know how you decide to live your life, but you can definitely be a white pumpkin looking character. And I think this is, I, I don't know if you're actually allowed this in Tumble, but I feel like this is a fun way to challenge yourself in the game modes where you're allowed to do so. So yeah, there are two sets of armor. The third set of armor is found, again, it's kind of secretly, a lot of people haven't uh, noticed it just yet. There's a little secret thing in the trees here. And if you go here, you can find chain armor. Again, actually better than either of the other two sets we found, even though it's like just about as easy. It's just kind of hidden. And then there is two more sets of armor we can get without having to win the game. Because again, diamond armor is only for people uh, that win the game. Because just over here at the top, you're going to find yourself a set... Oh, sorry. You're going to find a room with two bits of armor. They're found just up there. And you're going to find another room just to the left of that, which has, as you can see, a dispenser where you can clearly get both sets of armor. And this one took me a really long time to find out. Don't ask me why the other stuff was, you know, relatively easy and this one was tricky. Uh, but what it is, is you have to, because there's this, there's little pressure plates down here. You have to drop the, uh, you know, the armor stands onto the pressure plate, activate the buttons and activate the thing. So yeah, there's two ways to do this. The first way for the iron armor is there's a little button hidden very sneakily in the corner there. That will drop down the iron armor and allow you to get, again, one more time, iron armor if you really want that. So, again, this is better than chains. We'll totally take the replacement, except the helmet, apparently. Uh, then there is a button found within here. A another really, really sneaky one. It's in the ceiling. You can barely spot it, but you can press it. It'll drop down your armor. It'll, pr it'll put the gold one on there, and that will give you the final set of armor. So, yeah, that is how you find all six sets of armor. The five I showed you, plus the demo one up there. That's how you find all 12 music discs. Again, all the ones I showed you, and uh, and the one that's playing right now. Uh, that's how you find all of the mob heads. That's how you drain the fountain. And that is every Easter egg we know so far for the Minecraft console minigame lobby. So this was a very long video, I know, but there's a lot of Easter eggs going on. And in case you're curious as to what I think might be part of a future one, because I, I'm pretty sure this is all of them, But I, because, you, know, you know, last time I was so sure there'd be extra ones, and there wasn't. But just in case this time there is a really secret one that's going to be discovered, like, weeks down the line, if you want to play around and maybe try and look for it, there's a lot of item frames that haven't been accounted for yet. So, uh, as well, so uh, there's a lot of stuff which, like, links into previous, um, you know, stuff I've just mentioned. But there is also, like, item frames on the wall here, gold and diamond. Uh, sorry, gold and um, iron. A little bit weird. There's four item frames on the wall over here, which link up to things vaguely found in the map. So maybe you can rotate these and that'll make a thing happen. And there's a possible redstone trail that will lead these somewhere. I don't know where. I don't know what it will do. But it's a thing that's totally possible, right? Then uh, as well as that, there is uh, just down at the bottom of the map. Again, I'm pretty sure this one means nothing, but just in case. There are more item frames that might be triggers uh, because the, um, the old lobby... Again, the old lobby isn't actually filled with as many secrets as you might think. There is a music disc. There's like a, a few cool references. And also you can open the doors from behind if you want. Because again, it's kind of like open here. So yeah, you can, uh, by the way, they're just for the record. You can open these. And you can also like get outside the map. Which, or get outside the map in big air quotes. Um, but yeah, there's also um, the, uh, the swords on the wall here still. The sword, swords on the wall here still. Which are in the correct position based on the sword around the map. However, maybe if you mix these up and put them in a different position, maybe match the ones in the overworld, maybe that gives you like, you know, some cool thing to happen. I doubt it. I thought I heard something, but I doubt it, but it, it, it's possible that one of these things will go somewhere. But for now, I just figured I'd point out that this is, uh, you know, the all of the secrets we found so far. I don't think there's more at this point, but if there is, I figured I should point out at least where they might be heading. I hope you did all enjoy this video. Hopefully, you now know all the secrets, and I will see you all in the next one. So have a nice day, everybody. Goodbye.